So how can companies obtain an understanding of their internal and external environment? We are going to cover three different analytical tools that can be used. Either they can perform a SWOT analysis or a PESTAL analysis, or lastly, they can use Porter's five forces. So please note, guys, these are just various different analytical tools that can be used by companies so that they can gain an understanding of their internal and external business environment. First, we are going to look at a SWOT analysis. Now, the SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, what's important to note, guys, is strengths and weaknesses are in the internal environment. So you can see that on the side over here, when we are looking at the internal environment, we consider strengths and weaknesses. On the other hand, opportunities and threats are in the external environment. So when we consider the external environment, we are looking at opportunities and threats. Now, please note, if this gets asked, it is very important that you understand the difference between a strength and an opportunity or a weakness and a threat. If you put things under the wrong headings, you won't be awarded your marks. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail. Strengths and weaknesses are in the internal environment. So obviously, guys, strengths are going to be positive things in the internal environment, and weaknesses are negative things in the internal environment. Let's look at strengths in a little bit more detail. Strengths are attributes which enable the company to obtain its objectives. So for example, human competency, committed employees, or access to financial resources. So strengths are positive things within the company that help them achieve their objectives. Whereas on the other hand, weaknesses are negative factors that prevent the company from achieving their objectives. So for example, if they have a high employee turnover, they have a narrow product range, or they have high gearing. Gearing just refers to the amount of debt a company has in their capital structure. So if the company has a lot of debt in their capital structure, that is a weakness. And the reason why it's a weakness is a lot of debt creates risk for the company because you have to meet those debt commitments. Regardless of your financial performance, you need to pay back the interest and the capital on that debt. So it increases the risk of the company. Also, if they want to raise additional finance in the future, it might be hard to get access to more finance if they already have too much debt in their capital structure. So strengths and weaknesses exist in the internal environment. They are either positive things within the company or negative things within the company. On the other hand, opportunities and threats exist in the external environment. Opportunities are obviously going to be positive, whereas threats are going to be negative. Opportunities are circumstances that the entity can use to enhance their profits. So the example that I've given you over here is that there has been a general growth in the industry. So it's important to be able to identify the difference between a strength and an opportunity. If the industry as a whole is doing well, that is not unique to the specific company. That means that any company operating in that industry can use this to their advantage. So that is referred to as an opportunity. An opportunity is available to all companies in that industry. If the industry is experiencing growth, then all companies that are operating in that industry should be able to take advantage of that opportunity. It's not unique to the one company. So an opportunity exists in the external environment and it's available to all companies operating in that industry. However, a strength is unique to your specific company because it's internal. Then let's take a look at threats. Threats are circumstances that jeopardize the success and the profitability of the entity, and they are not controllable. So for example, strikes by workers in the industry, rapid changes in technology, decreasing profits in the industry. So what's important to note, guys, is 
Weaknesses and threats are both negative. However, weaknesses are controllable and threats are not controllable. The reason why a weakness is controllable is because it's unique to your company, it's in the internal environment, and you should be able to either reduce or remove that weakness. On the other hand, a threat exists in the external environment, meaning that all companies that operate in that industry will be exposed to that same threat. And because it's external to the company, it is not necessarily controllable. So if workers in a certain industry are striking, if there's fast changes in technology, or if profits in the industry are just deteriorating, that is in the external environment and it is not under the control of the company. However, if the company has a high employee turnover, meaning that staff are resigning all of the time, that is a weakness that is unique to that specific company and it's controllable. They need to address the problem. They need to investigate why staff are resigning so that they can put measures in place in order to reduce their employee turnover. Or if the company has very high gearing, they need to start paying off some of their debt. So the difference between the two is a weakness is internal, so it is controllable, whereas a threat is external, so it is not necessarily controllable. Let's have a look at an example. Now, I want you to approach this example as you would any test or exam. At this point in time, in the reading time, you don't yet have the required, so you don't yet know what's going to be asked. So we can't be identifying strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats because that might not actually get asked. However, to save a bit of time when you finally do get to the required, what I recommend that you do from an exam technique perspective is during the reading time, I want you to identify positive and negative factors. So any positive factors will mark off with a tick. and any negative factors with a cross. So we won't yet go into detail and say, this positive factor is a strength or an opportunity, this negative factor is a weakness or a threat. We won't go into that level of detail because we don't yet know what the required is going to ask. However, we'll just mark off positive and negative factors. Then when we get to the required, if the required asks for a SWOT analysis, all of the positive factors that we've marked off will either be strengths or opportunities. So at that point, we'll decide whether it's a positive factor in the internal environment or the external environment. And all of the negative factors that we marked off will either be a weakness in the internal environment or a threat in the external environment. But we'll make that decision when we're actually answering the required, depending on what's being asked, if we actually get asked to perform a SWOT analysis. But the benefit of doing this is even if you get to the required and you need to identify risks, any factors that you've marked off as negative points, those would also be risks. So this is very helpful and it's a very handy way to approach questions. Very good exam technique. All right, let's work through the example. Dexter Limited is listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. All right, so the fact that the company is listed is going to be a positive factor because if a company is listed, it's always easier for them to raise new finance. The company operates a chain of retail stores across Southern Africa. Okay, so they are not only operating in South Africa, they are operating across Southern Africa, so in other African countries as well. Now, as soon as you have operations outside of South Africa, that is going to expose you to country risk. So the fact that they are operating across Southern Af Africa is a, a negative point because that is going to expose them to country risk. Okay, so they operate a chain of retail stores across Southern Africa, which sell clothing that carry its own branding to predominantly upper income customers. Okay, so two more negative factors over here. Firstly, they have a very limited or a very narrow product range because they only sell clothing. And in addition to that, they only sell clothing with their own branding. So they only sell Dexter branded clothing. So they've got a very limited or narrow product range and that will limit profitability. 
So that is a negative factor over there. Then in addition to that, they are selling to predominantly upper income customers. And this is also going to be a negative factor because they've got a very limited customer base. They're only focusing on upper income customers. What about lower and middle income customers? So this is negative because it's limiting their market share. Okay, they could be selling to many more customers if they weren't only focusing on upper income customers. Despite continued economic hardships of recent years, the retail industry has experienced continued growth. Okay, so if the retail industry, Dexter Limited is operating in the retail industry, they have a chain of retail stores, so they're operating in the retail industry. The industry has experienced continued growth. That is going to be a positive factor over there because if the industry is going and if Dexter is managing their business correctly, they should be able to take advantage of that growth in the industry. This has led to an increase in competition. Okay, so the fact that we have an increase in competition, that's going to be a negative factor. But Dexter has managed to remain profitable and maintain healthy cash reserves. Okay, so obviously because of the fact that the retail industry has experienced continued growth, they have taken advantage of that and they have remained profitable and they've got healthy cash reserves. Okay, so we'll link that all together in one positive point over there. Okay, the industry's experienced growth, they've taken advantage of the fact that the industry is growing and they've remained profitable and they have healthy cash reserves. There is one other positive point over here. The fact that they have healthy cash reserves, this means if the company wants to invest in projects or if they want to expand, they have the cash available to do this. So they wouldn't have to go and get additional debt finance. So the benefit of that is they can expand and invest without increasing their financial risk. Because remember, taking on additional finance, debt finance, will increase financial risk of the business. The company boasts a talented workforce and is committed to investing in their employees through continuous training. Okay, so the fact that they have a talented workforce is a positive factor because that will give them a competitive advantage. The fact that they are committed to investing in their employees through continuous training is also a positive factor because it shows that they are socially responsible. Dexter has made progress with their employment equity plan and procurement from BE vendors, achieving a level four rating under the broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Act. Now, it's extremely important that you understand how the different BE levels work. Um, it works from a level one to a level eight. Level one is the best BE rating and the level eight is the worst BEE rating, okay? So a level four is a mediocre rating. So I'm going to mark this off as a negative factor because it shows slow transformation. All right, so we've marked off all of the positive and negative factors and we are now moving on to the required. And it just so happens in this question that we are going to be performing a SWOT analysis. Okay, you need to prepare a memorandum to the management of Dexter Limited, which includes an analysis of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of their business. So in other words, you need to perform a SWOT analysis. You should incorporate a general knowledge of the relevant industry in your answer. All right, now there is communication skill marks over here. And very often when you are required to present your answer in a certain format, like in this case, you have to prepare a memorandum, there will be a communication mark, which will be awarded for layout and structure. Now, it's very important guys, communication marks are not free marks. You need to earn communication marks by communicating properly. So you need to set your answer out in the format of a memorandum, to be awarded this communication skill mark over here. Okay, so let's just quickly go through the format of the memorandum. 
very important. You need to say who the memorandum is to. So if you go back to the required, you can see you are prepared preparing a memorandum to the management of Dexter Limited. So it's to the management of Dexter Limited. Who is it from? It is from you. Don't put your name over here, guys. CTA is preparing you for your psychoprofessional exams where you are not allowed to use your names. So don't put your name. Don't put a fictitious name because nobody knows it's a fictitious name and that causes a lot of drama when you have to go and you have to research and pull out all the records to determine is this actually a student name or is it a fictitious name. Don't put any names over here. Just say CTA student. Then you need to put the date and the subject. And this is obviously a SWOT analysis. Then just a quick introduction. So just say something along the lines of, please find below the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats associated with Dexter's business. And then also extremely important, guys, right at the end over here, make sure that you also have a conclusion. Okay, so short and sweet, just something along the lines of, I trust that you'll find the above in order. Please do not hesitate to contact me should you require any further information. Okay, so that's all. Don't forget that conclusion. And then I recommend when you are performing a SWOT analysis that you set your answer out in the format of a table, just like I've done over here, where you have strengths and weaknesses in the internal environment. Sorry, that highlight is not working very well. Strengths and weaknesses in the internal environment. And just below that, I've got opportunities and threats in the external environment. Okay, so that layout works very well for a SWOT analysis. And now we've already done most of the work for this because we already identified all of the positive and negative factors when we were reading through the information provided in the scenario. So now all we need to do is wherever we have a positive factor, we need to determine whether it's a strength or an opportunity. So is it in the internal or the external environment? And then we just need to slot it under the correct heading in the suggested solution. And obviously for the negative factors, we need to determine is it a weakness in the internal environment or is it a threat in the external environment? So let's have a look at that right now. So the first positive factor that we identified is the fact that Dexter is listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Now, if you go back to the previous page, you will see that access to financial resources is a strength. This is a strength that the company has because of the fact that they have listed. If they need to raise new finance, it will be easier for them to raise new finance. So this is a strength that exists in the internal environment. So Dexter is listed. Now, to earn full marks here, guys, you can't just take the information directly from the scenario and put that into your solution. You need to take this one step further. You need to explain why this is a strength. This is a strength because it means that they have more access to funding. So take the wording directly from the question, but then this and over here is very important. You need to take that one step further and you need to explain why this is a strength, okay? It's easier for them to raise new finance if they are listed. Okay, then next we said the fact that they have a chain of retail stores across Southern Africa exposes them to country risk. That is a negative factor. So remember guys, weaknesses are in the internal environment, unique to the company, they're controllable, threats exist in the external environment. Any company in that industry would be exposed to that threat. It's not unique to the company and it's not controllable. This is something that would not be under the company's control. They can't control country risk. So this is going to be a threat in the external environment. Okay, so first use the wording in the question. They operate across Southern Africa, but then you need to take that one step further. So this exposes the company to country risk, such as political instability, inadequate infrastructure, foreign exchange risk, etc.
All right, then the next negative factor is the fact that they only sell their own branded clothing. So we said this means that they have a limited product range. This is a negative factor. It is something that's definitely under their control. They can change this by diversifying their product range. So think of any retail store that you've been into. They don't only sell clothing. They also usually sell things like accessories, beauty products, homeware, etc. So this is something that's under their control. They can diversify their product range in order to improve their profitability. So because it's under their control, it's going to be classified as a weakness in the internal environment. So they have a limited product range because they only sell their own branded clothing and take it one step further. Why is this a weakness? Why is it a bad thing? Because this will limit the amount of profit that they can make. It limits profitability. And we also saw that they sell to predominantly upper income customers. So we said this is a negative factor because they're obviously limiting their market share. What about lower and middle income earners? And this is also something that's under their control. They can also change their business model to make sure that they have products that are more affordable to the greater population. And that would then obviously increase their market share. So because this is something that's under their control, it is a weakness in the internal environment. Okay, they have a limited customer base because they predominantly focus on upper income customers. So that limits their market share. Then in the next paragraph, we have the fact that the retail industry has experienced growth. Now, we said this is a positive factor. And this is not a positive factor that is unique to Dexter. If the industry is growing, then any retail chain that is operating in that industry should be able to capitalize on that and also grow. So the fact that it's the industry that is growing tells me that this is a positive factor that exists in the external environment. And this is therefore an opportunity. Okay, and they have used this opportunity to their advantage because of the fact that the industry is um, growing, they have managed to remain profitable and they have healthy cash reserves. Okay, so the industry is experiencing growth, which enables Dexter to be profitable despite economic hardships. All right, the fact that there has been an increase in competition, that is a negative factor, and that is not under their control. So because it's not under their control, that is going to be classified as a threat in the external environment. Okay, so the retail industry has become increasingly competitive. This isn't unique to them. Any retailer that's operating in the retail industry will be exposed to this threat, okay? It's not unique to Dexter. So the industry has become increasingly competitive. Take it one step further to make sure you get all of the marks. Why is this a threat? Because it could have a negative impact on sales or market share of the company. Then we had one other positive point over here. The fact that this has helped them maintain healthy cash reserves. We said if they have healthy cash reserves, then they can fund expansion using cash. They don't have to take on additional debt. So they can keep their gearing levels low and they won't be exposed to financial risk. So this is a positive factor. Is it in the internal environment or the external environment? It's unique to Dexter. So it is a strength in the internal environment. Okay, not all of the companies in this industry have these cash balances. It's unique to Dexter. Okay, so they have healthy cash reserves, which enables them to fund expansion without increasing financial risk. Again, make sure you always take it that step further. Don't just say they have healthy cash reserves. Explain why that is a strength. Okay, they have a talented workforce. That is a positive factor. And they are committed to investing in the employees. That is also a positive factor. And both of those are positive factors that are unique to Dexter. So these are strengths. 
that exist in the internal environment. Okay, so they have a talented workforce, which enables them to have a competitive advantage. And they also invest in the employees through continuous training. So they are socially responsible. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. You are not just using the words directly from the question. Always take it one step further. Explain why it is a strength. Okay, then we identified one other factor. The level four BEE rating we said is a negative factor because it's a mediocre BEE rating. This is something that is under their control. So this is a weakness that exists in the internal environment. They should focus on trying to improve that BEE compliance rating. Okay, so it is a weakness in the internal environment. They have a relatively mediocre BEE rating. Why is this a weakness? Because it shows slow transformation. Okay, so at this point, we have taken into account all of the positive and negative factors that we identified in the question. But what you need to do now is you just need to take a step back. And if you look at the required, you have been specifically told to incorporate general knowledge of the relevant industry in your answer. So we know that Dexter sells clothing, which means they are operating in the fashion industry. And there are certain risks associated to operating in the fashion industry. Now, these risks will be negative factors that are not unique to Dexter. Any company that's operating in the retail industry and is selling clothing would be exposed to these risks. So these are threats that exist in the external environment. And what are these risks? Firstly, there's a risk of stock obsolescence because we know that fashion trends change very quickly. So it's very hard to keep up to date with changes in fashion trends. So there's a risk that clothing that they have on sale becomes obsolete because there's been a change in a fashion trend and nobody wants to buy it anymore. In addition to that, Obviously, they need to buy clothing in advance, so they need to put all of their orders in to have the clothing put in stores. And there's a risk that they might predict fashion trends incorrectly. They might think something's about to come into fashion, and they buy a lot of that particular item, and maybe it doesn't end up actually coming into fashion, and then that will also obviously result in losses to the company. And potentially also reputational damage if... Um, Customers don't think that the company is selling trendy clothing anymore. So if we just go to our threats, the fact that they operate in the fashion industry exposes the company to the risk of stock obsolescence because fashion trends change rapidly. In addition to that, if they incorrectly predict fashion trends, that could lead to financial losses and also reputational damage. All right, so just as a recap, guys, we were looking at a SWOT analysis in this example, but remember, what were we trying to do? We said that the company can use various different analytical tools so that they can gain an understanding of the internal and the external environment. So one way that a company can understand the environment that they're operating in is through a SWOT analysis. Another way is through a PESTEL analysis or through Porter's Five Forces. So we are now going to look at these last two analytical tools. Let's look at the PESTEL analysis. This is another analytical tool that can be used by a company in order to understand the external environment. Now, what does it stand for? The P stands for political, the E stands for economic, the S stands for social, the T for technological, the E for environmental, and lastly, the L for legal. Now guys, if you're required to perform a PESTEL analysis, I recommend that you set your answer out in exactly the same way as we did for a SWOT analysis. First, write down all of these headings. So you're going to have a heading for political, for economic, for social, technological, environmental, and lastly for legal. Set your answer out with all of those headings. 
then you're going to go to the question and you're going to pull the information out of the question that relates to each of these headings. So if you're reading through the information provided in the question and they tell you anything about government policies, about war, corruption, or potential nationalization of private assets, you're going to slot that in under the heading political. If they tell you anything about exchange rates, about interest rates or inflation rates, you're going to put that under the heading economic. If they tell you about any trends or the demographics of society, so in other words, the age and the gender and the economic status of society, you are then going to put that under the heading social. If they give you any technological information in the question, so for example, companies that operate in the technology industry are obviously reliant on technology advancement if they want to remain competitive, they can't become outdated. And also just general technological advances could improve the productivity of all entities. So if they give you any of that kind of information in the question, you put that under the heading technological. Then if they give you any information about climate patterns, about the quality of water or air, that goes under the heading environmental. Or lastly, any legal information, any information about tax regulations, about competition regulations, health and safety regulations, consumer protection regulations, etc. That all then goes under the heading legal. So once again, please just know what PESTEL stands for so that you know what your headings are. You then set your answer out with those headings. You pull the information out of the question and you put it under the correct heading.